All right, hello. In this video, we are going to look at this discriminant test, which is sort of a smaller subset of the quadratic formula. Basically what it is, is, is that little piece underneath the square root. It's called the discriminant b squared minus 4ac. And it gives us a lot of information about what kind of roots we're going to get. So there's basically three things that can happen. The first case is that you have a positive discriminant. This is probably the most common. This means that you actually have something to plus and minus to get the two different roots from the axis of symmetry. Case two is probably the most rare. This is where you basically only have one root because your discriminant is exactly zero. So in this case, sometimes we call it a double root. And really the vertex is actually the x-intercept in this case. It's usually related to perfect square trinomials. And the last case is when you have a negative discriminant, so it could be above or below the x-axis, opening up or down, it means you have zero real roots. Basically the parabola never crosses the x-axis, so there's no x-intercepts at all. It's because you can't square a root and get a negative, sorry, you can't square root a negative number and end up with a real answer. Okay. So we will keep those three cases over on the side and we'll try a couple of problems. Generally, what they will ask you is to determine the nature of the roots of a particular equation. Now, what they're saying when they say nature of roots, they want to know, well, how many are there? Basically, which of those three cases is it? And also, are you getting rational or irrational roots? Which basically means we don't really need to find the values of the roots. We just have to figure out what the value of the discriminant is. So we will plug it into the discriminant formula, b squared minus 4ac. And in this case, we end up with, let's see, 9 minus negative 140, that's positive 149. So it's definitely case one because it's a positive discriminant. So we know there's going to be two real roots. Then we want to check, can we simplify a square root of 149? We can try that a bunch of different ways by making a factor tree or dividing it by perfect squares. It turns out we can't, so that's actually an irrational number. So for this particular equation, we say that we have two real irrational roots. All right, let's try another one here. Similar idea, this time just different numbers, maybe a little bit bigger discriminant. And when we plug it in, multiply that out, 49, that's going to turn into a plus because we're minusing a negative there. It turns into 169, which is actually a perfect square. And it is positive, so again, it's case one, which means we do have two real roots. Because it's a perfect square, we can break it down into just 13, which means it's a rational number. So for this one, we'll say that it has two real, but rational roots. All right, let's do one more quick one here. This time we'll say 3x squared plus 2x plus 10. And we should notice right away that the C value and the A value are both positive. So we'll see what happens when we plug them in. This time we are going for minus 120. Notice we're not minusing a negative. So our discriminant turns out to be a negative number, which means we can't get a real number when we square root that value. So we are in case three now, which means we have no real roots. Right? Essentially what this means is we've got no x-intercepts and we can tell that if it opens up because a is positive and we have a y-intercept, there's actually a pretty good chance just from noticing that, that we aren't gonna cross the x-axis at all. So. There's two different ways of telling us that we have no x-intercepts. All right, the other types of problems they ask you in this section are to figure out the value of some letter. Usually they use k. Let's say in this case that we'll have one real root. So we're looking at case two. We want to set our discriminant to zero. Basically, we have a b value of k. And it turns out that when we solve this thing, k could have been plus or minus six. So basically, if we have k of plus or minus six, we will end up with one real root. They also could have asked us, well, what if you want two real roots? So same equation. Basically, we just have to make the discriminant positive. But now we're actually solving something that's an inequality. So this is actually a hint of the next chapter. What that means is that k, its value has to be bigger than six. So it could either be like seven, eight, nine, or it could actually be to the left of negative six. Basically, as long as it's outside of positive six and negative six, not in between, then we'll be okay and we'll have two real roots. And we'll look at that a little bit more later. And the other case they could ask us is, well, what if there were zero real roots? So case three, it's kind of like what we just did, except our discriminant will be negative this time. 
So basically we're saying k squared has to be less than 36, which is implying that k has to be less than 6. Now those little bars around k are called absolute values. And basically they mean that the actual value of k has to be somewhere in between negative 6 and 6. If that's true, then we're going to have a negative discriminant. We won't have any roots. We'll talk more about absolute values later. There's actually a whole chapter on them. And yeah, again, thanks for watching.